also the California primaries as well as the Montana, the New Mexico, the New Jersey, and I feel like I'm missing one more, but the, anyway, the, the primaries are now over. And the res election results are still coming in. We're still trying to, you know, hammer out all the details. Um, and very well, everything does seem to be, you know, there, there are a few issues, though, that have been going on during this election that are showing up in these primaries as well. Now, it's too early to basically assume who has won the Democratic primary, and it's, um, it's really kind of one of those things where we can't really be sure until July 25th when superdelegates ca uh, cast their ballots. Um, and frankly, there's always a chance delegates are going to switch, you know, switch around and stuff like that. But the point being is that uh, Hillary Clinton has achieved the ne necessary amount of delegates needed to to have the nomination. But that does not necessarily mean that she has won the nomination. But ultimately, it's one of those things where how she came about winning certain things was very sketchy. It also was the whole fact that people are voting essentially, you know, they're, they're voting for a particular candidate, yet the delegates completely fucking ignore what the people, the people want, because let's be honest, the Democrats have wanted Hillary Clinton to be their nominee pretty much since the beginning. Although there, and although there have been a section of Democrats that have actually wanted Bernie Sanders to be the nominee because they actually know that he stands a better chance in the general with uh, against Donald Trump. Um, but of course, in this election, we've had a very corrupt election going on in the United States. And I mean, to even the outsiders looking in, it's very obvious that America has a very corrupted form of democracy and uh, but essentially that's bourgeois democracy in general I mean this is the extreme level of bourgeois democracy you know desperation of where it gets to where they will literally rig elections in order to basically make sure that their candidate is chosen you know this is really no different than you know when the u.s accuses certain countries like venezuela of uh, vote rigging and, and stuff like that you know there it's uh, kind of you know it, at this point i don't really think that the u.s has much of a say in trying to accuse people of vote rigging when basically both their parties have done the same thing um, and essentially that's what's gone on in this election is that we've had voter suppression, we've had counts of voter fraud in Kentucky, and another eastern U.S. state that I don't, can't really think off the top of my head at this point, um, I think it was Maryland actually, but I can't really say for certain, but the point being is that there has been a, uh, there has actually been accusations of voter fraud and there definitely has been voter suppression with people either who have been Democrats or nonpartisans that are getting Republican ballots and can't vote people that are nonpartisans and can't vote at all happened to me um, it's one of those things where it was uh, all this sort of bullshit has been happening um, party members even getting purged, such as the 30-some-odd delegates in Nevada that were not able to, uh, that were Bernie Kratz that were not able to vote for him um, during that. So there's been a lot of um, suppression. And, of course, you know, I think a lot of this also has to do with um, voter ID laws in certain states. I think this also has to do with, um, you know, the fact that certain acts, uh, certain parts of the Voters' Rights Act got struck down a couple of years ago. So, I mean, there's a, there's a series of issues that is, has led to this. But essentially, 
to say whether or not Hillary has won the nomination would be doing what every other damn media outlet has done and that's calling it way too early. That's not what I'm here for. But I am here to basically say in the event that it does become obvious, I mean, the whole thing is, is that Bernie Sanders has said himself, if he does not win the nomination, he plans to have a independent run, which, you know, all in favor, whatever. But let's just put put that aside for a minute. Let's say for, let's say for hypothetical situations that Hillary Clinton's the nominee. Okay, she goes into the into the general election. She's up against Donald Trump. Many polls have already that were seeing her winning now say now actually say that they're neck and neck or even her behind by a couple of percentage points. That's not a good thing to have. Whereas Bernie Sanders is was winning polls against Donald Trump from anywhere from 52% to 58%. I mean, you'd think that he would be the logical nominee for the Democratic Party, right? Well, the problem is, is that there's this level of McCarthyism that still exists within both parties, frankly, and especially the Democratic Party today. There is this American, along with the idea of American exceptionalism, there's this idea of McCarthyism that somehow socialism is bad, that any form of socialism, in this case social democracy, that any sort of basically challenge to the bourgeoisie is basically seen as a threat and by and that this the bourgeoisie will use any means necessary to quell that threat to basically stamp it out to get rid of it they'll throw any amount of money to basically you know suppress it and that's exactly what they've done there that's exactly what the what the democratic party is doing and that's also why you see a lot of this fracturing in the democratic party that we haven't seen up until this year now the Republican Party, on the other hand, we, we've seen we're, we're seeing the dying of that party. You know, we, we've been seeing that from a mile away. It, it's obvious that, that that party is going to die within the next couple of years. Um, but the Democrats may end up having a little bit of an issue themselves, and that's what a lot of this has been about. But let's just say, for all intents and purposes, and by the way, I'm in no way endorsing Bernie Sanders. I'm voting, I voted for the dude. Well, I basically, in, by doing that video I did to the message to the delegates, I'm essentially entering into an oral agreement, participating in the bourgeois political system. Yes, I am voting for him. I am most likely going to try to vote for him in the general if he runs as an independent. I just haven't made, but I haven't made up my mind yet. I don't know, whatever. I'm basically saying that if participating in the bourgeois election, I'm voting for the man. That's simple, whatever. And I know I'm going to get flack from other Marxist members in my community for saying that, and I don't fucking give a damn. It's my choice. I'm an Amer, you know, I'm. You know, I'm participating in the American system. I'm voting for somebody. Fuck it. You know, but right on down to it, I do have my issues with the man on certain things. That all aside, I'm basically saying this, though. If Bernie Sanders does not get the nomination, I personally think that Californians need to start basically putting the motions forward for independence and you know we're going to figure out by by the coming week we're going to know what the election results are how our delegates voted and already we know how, how some of our delegates voted we know that our governor is voting for Hillary Clinton you know despite you know which I find just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, here this man goes on bitching about Donald Trump and the wall and talking about how we need to protect Californians from the rest of the country and then this man endorses Hillary Clinton. Th this is the complex mind of Governor Jerry Brown. But all that aside, 
if Bernie Sanders, the two out of one Californians were going to vote for Bernie Sanders. That was just the whole thing. And if our delegates are going to ignore us and everything else, and Hillary Clinton were to get the nomination, it's one of those things where I think that Californians as a whole need to basically start the, their move towards independence. Now, I'm, I don't have enough time to talk about it in this part here, so I'm actually going to make a part two um, discussing that. Um, but I wanted to basically make everything clear about what's going on with this whole scenario with uh, the Democratic uh, National Committee. Uh, there's been calls for ha having the chairwoman step down. Um, the party itself has just become fractured between, you know, the Hillary back, you know, mainline statist group of Democrats and the more neoliberal uh, Bernie Kratz, as they're being called, uh, that are within it. And essentially there looks to be um, po the potential of a party split. Um, a split that, frankly, we've only seen coming within the last few months because, let, let's be honest, we really thought that the Republicans were going to die first. And now we actually might actually be seeing a complete um, fracture of the two-party system. So it's kind of interesting to see where all this is going to lead. And so... And that's really all I can say about that, because I do not want to call it for Hillary Clinton, because frankly, nothing is set in stone yet. And though it is a long haul for Bernie Sanders, it's still possible he could get the nomination. We just don't know. And frankly, with the whole, again, I've mentioned this uh, in my first attempt, and I'm going to mention it a little bit here. Whenever there is a this fight for any sort of social change, in this case social democracy, there's always that challenge by the bourgeoisie to, again, stamp it out. And that is exactly what's going on. And Sanders represents pretty much this new neoliberal movement. He represents this radical form of, of uh, liberalism, social democracy, if you will, um, that he's trying to introduce into American politics and to many Americans and to especially to you know to the status quo to the bourgeoisie that's a challenge that that's a threat to them and so my advice to those that are sticking with Bernie continue the fight the hard fight no matter what because you may not be willing to do actual revolution, and let's be honest, what's going on here is not an actual political revolution. It's not an actual revolution. You know, revolution without actually overthrowing the ruling class is not revolution. It's just simply reform. It's bourgeois parliamentarianism. So my advice is to continue the struggle you know, in, by any means necessary, by basically just continuing to fight for your candidate. And so, because by simply giving up, you're not only not doing revolution, you're not even doing reform at that point. It's all about continuing the fight. It's all about struggle. As a Marxist, you know, person, I'm trying to give this advice to you. Continue the struggle. Because nobody wins without continuing the struggle. That is the point to fighting for what you believe in. But anyway, I will be doing the part two, which includes, which is more about the California independence dynamic, about all this, in uh, the next part, which I will release after this one. Um, so until then, I will see you guys on the other side. Um, later. What's wrong with being, what's wrong with being confident? Uh -huh.